Last time on Improv Tabletop, a shot rang out. Who's getting shot? Let's find out here in the world of Noirnia. <laughs> What's shaking, everybody? You're listening to Improv Tabletop, the Fate RPG actual play where we make up everything on the spot. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and today I'm joined by... Caleb Anderton, one in three chance of being shot. Connor Wood. So basically, I am monkey. That joke has too many layers, uh, but Sunset Boulevard. So basically, I am monkey. And Heather. <laughs> All right. So here's the interesting thing, Connor, about you saying that you are a monkey. Remember how I rolled die at the end of the last episode Aww. to see who was going to get shot at? I am monkey. Yeah, so Connor... A bullet is coming towards you in the darkness. Ah, jeez. What would you like to do? I, I, I am going to attempt to dodge and take a photo of the shooter at the same time. All right. Sounds pretty quick to me. Roll to defend with quick. Okay. Wah! Oh, good. <laughs> That's a flat zero on the dice. So a two. Positive two. A two. All right. And how intense was that shot from a bullet? How intense, indeed. Also a two. <laughs> so on a tie, that means the attacker is not going to harm you, but is going to gain a boost. Okay. And I think the boost that we're going to give to the attacker is as they fire the gun, you see the muzzle flash. You dodge at just the right moment to not have the bullet actually go into your body, but it just barely clips the film release shutter, the little lever on the side of your camera, and the film door pops open, <gasps> exposing the film of the photo that you just took, oh. losing the evidence of who it was that shot you. My negatives! And you hear footsteps beginning to run down a hallway. Now, I can forgive being shot at, but messing with my photography, that's a whole new story. <laughs> I'm coming for you, mysterious shooter. And when I get my hands on you, it's going to be heck to pay. Ha, huh, try and get your hands on me. That's why I led you here into the maze-like catacombs beneath the castle. You'll never find me here in the darkness. Ah, darkness, my one weakness. Not... <laughs> the flash. Yeah. <laughs> Take photos to try and light the way and, I don't know, maybe disorient this guy. Maybe disorient myself. Who knows? Uh, I'm following this voice. And <laughs> yeah. Maybe disorient your friends who are also lost. You all got separated here in the dark. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's head over to Sam Sparrowgold. This... It was supposed to be just such a simple investigation for Aslan. You'd heard about uh, somebody who vandalized the lamppost. Aww. And yeah, it turned out to be part of like a big turf war sort of situation between the Duffel Puds and the Marsh Wiggles. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Those guys again. Man, now I'm lost underneath the castle? Yeah, lost underneath the castle. Uh, the ruins of Ker Perivel, uh, off on the coast of Narnia. So yeah, you chase the people here, trying to figure out what was going on with this turf war, and you got in way over your head. You're honestly not entirely sure what all the details are and who is who and wh what motivation belongs to which person. Uh, but by the time you're done catching this person, all the pieces are sure to fall into place. That's right. I follow the sound of a gunshot and the incessant flashing that's coming from Drew over there. <laughs> Drew, don't worry, I'm coming. I'm coming over. We're gonna find him for Aslan. You're a little late. Our shooter has ruined my camera. Or at, at least the photos I'd already taken. Concern at all. It would be much more effective if we actually tried to capture the guy instead of just taking pictures of him. I was. I was trying to capture his image. Or her. I don't know. Could be a dame. Could be a dame. Could always be a dame. We know. Ain't it always just a dame? Hey, uh, wasn't there three of us? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Probably. Um, hey, he's safe. Yeah, where is EC sneaking off to in this moment? EC is definitely trying to be one of the it crowd. So EC has found some of the minions of the other ones and has like <laughs> smudged up his face to look more like a satyr, to look different than he is and to prove that he's one of them. Yeah. So the satyrs and the fawns have taken two separate sides in this turf war. And you know that the, the instigators are the marsh wiggles. So you want to get in the good graces 
of the duffel putts. So you have to pretend to be a satyr to be part of the duffel puds. So you've got you're there with this group of duffel puds. Uh, they're the people who have just one big leg and one big foot. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, from Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Wow. Yeah, they they're doing their like single legged hopping thing. Uh, they are trying to infiltrate from the other side of the catacombs here, and one of them turns towards you and says. All right, then we found a secret entrance and kicks it in. There's a splintering of boards as this uh, secret trap door on the other side of the castle is shattered open and light begins to filter down into the catacombs. You hear uh, shouting coming from in there and every so often you see a bright flash. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly what I, what I was thinking. <laughs> good, good one. <laughs> you admittedly look a little bit less confident than you seemed when we first picked you up over back in the forest. That's just because I had to see what side you were really on, you know what I'm saying? And how can I be sure that the side that you are on is the same side that I am on the side on that is not the side that the other people are on the side on? And he pulls out a cigar and takes a big old drag and looks at you suspiciously. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you see, Precious, that's a good question, and I'm glad you asked this, because... The way you can see that I'm on the side that's not on the side of the side of what you think the side should be on is by this. And I pull out my encased red herring. Oh my. <laughs> Pulling out the red herring right off the bat. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, you pull out the famed red herring and all of the duffel puds gasp and they can say, the red herring that was gifted to Lucy the Valiant by Aslan himself. Uh, that's the, the the gift that not many people know about. Uh, she got the she got the cordial and the dagger from Santa Claus, but she also got this red herring from Aslan. It's super cool. Uh, you gotta read in the books that no one reads. You know? right, right, right. Yeah, this is in the Silmarillion of the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> the, the B side, if you will. Yeah, this lead duffel pud looks at you and says, "Well, I've been double crossed by a triple crosser on a few occasions in the past, but now I know that you're for real." That's what I'm saying here. Yeah? So we gotta go in and we gotta do the thing in the thing and be with the people that aren't part of the thing and ruin it all. Ruin. I like the sound of that. Let's go ruin everything. <gasps> and they start like slipping down into this new entrance into the catacombs and they start spreading out trying to form like a pincer maneuver to uh, capture this marsh wiggle who is evading you guys. Mm. So that I understand where we're at. So me and the duffel puds have just broken into a part of the catacomb and they're coming from the other side. Do we see them? Did we hear the gunshot? Are we like, that guy is running into us or how close are we to everything? Yeah, so you're kind of on opposite sides of the maze at this point. You definitely heard the gunshot and you can see incessant flashing from kind of off in the distance. So you're kind of sandwiching this person that you're trying to capture. Mm. Okay, great. See, let's bring it back over to uh, Sam. I don't believe you've actually taken your action yet. Oh yeah. Uh, by this point, is the guy gone or is he still around? Uh, you hear his sort of evil cackling every so often, bouncing from one side of the maze towards your ears. And you turn in that direction and you're like, ah, I found you. And then it is empty and you hear it coming from a different direction. This evil mastermind is trying to evade your notice. Man, I never do this, but I'm pulling out my stunt right away as well. Oh, um, yeah. I'm just going to turn in the direction that I hope he is in based on all the bouncing and all the echoes and just bellow for us, Len! And I'm just going to try to ram him. Yeah. All right, yeah. You make a bull rush directly towards this guy. Uh, with the use of your stunt there, you turn and you chose the right direction. Yeah. Now you just got to see if you can pin him down. That sounds like a pretty forceful rush to me. Uh, this Marsh Wiggle is going to try and wiggle his way out of your path with Quick. And he only gets a plus one. <laughs> well, that's a minus three. I'm spending a fate point already. Nice. That nice. is understandable, yeah. I'm just going to re-roll that. Good call. What? Come on. That's a minus one. Ooh. Does that include your plus three forceful? No, it doesn't. I forgot we add those. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Uh, plus two is better. Yeah. That'll do her. So plus two versus his plus one. You rush forward, horns down, 
and you catch his torso right between your horns and pin him up against a stone wall. You can yeah. feel the stone cracking and kind of flaking away as your horns pierce into it, trapping him in front of you. All right, all right, you puffle huff, you puddle jumper. You don't need to go anymore. We've got you, you little fiffle wiggler. Don't move or you're going to get crushed. We've got you. Just just stop wiggling, please. Uh, I'm a marsh wiggle. It's all I can do is wiggle. And uh, let's see, the three of you have gone. I suppose that brings it to his turn in the initiative now. And he is actually going to just pull out a sap. No, not a sap. That's too fancy. He pulls out an empty beer bottle full of sand. <laughs> and he's going to try and smack you on the head with it. <laughs> what? Why does he have that? So he's going to roll to attack you with forceful. How would you like to defend against his blow? Um, I'll, I'll defend with forceful as well. I've got I've got thick skin. I think I'll just kind of, you know, brace against it. Yeah, just let him hit you on the head. Yeah, I'll be fine. All right, go ahead and roll to defend with forceful. All right, changing up the dice because the other ones were letting me down. <laughs> That's not much better. Uh, but with Forceful, that's a plus four. Oh, he only got a plus two on his attack. So the bottle comes down on your head and shatters. You feel the sand spraying out behind you. And he looks down at the shattered neck of the bottle with a bunch of little jagged edges poking off of it. And he is just kind of aghast at this point in shock at the fact that you are so burly that you weren't able to uh, be at all harmed by this attack. So he's in a bit of a daze at the moment. And I think we're going to pass it over to our photographer friend who's uh, kind of watching this happen from a little bit of a distance. So I'm gonna huff back up to this guy. I'm a little ticked at this point. I always get my shot. And take another photo of him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or try to with my damaged camera. Roll to overcome with flashy, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, dang, five. Five. Wow. Uh, he's going to try and put his hands up in front of his face so his identity won't be compromised with quick. Ah. And he also gets a plus five. What the oh, H? man. That was a very good roll for him. This is your mortal nemesis. I know. <laughs> the anti-flash. <laughs> the reverse flash. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So yeah, every angle you go in to try and get a good, clean picture of his face, he throws up a hand right in the way. And he goes, I have years of experience dodging the paparazzi, and I'm not going to fall to you today. Nuts, I say in defeat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who would you like to go next? Uh, I'm going to say, oh, where is EC? He's got such a good eye for lighting. This wouldn't happen if he was here. <laughs> All right. So I think because I've been given the gift by Miss Lucy, the Honorable, we uh, should listen to me now and have me be in charge of the duffel puffs for a second <laughs> and go towards that flashing. Yeah, as you start getting closer, you can see in those intermittent flashes, it's kind of like a almost Doctor Who style when like the strobe lights are going and you see <laughs> it just kind of playing out the, the weeping angels, yes. almost like a stop motion kind of thing. Nice. You see uh, in each of those flashes, this stop motion fight where this Marsh Wiggle has this broken bottle and he's like trying to jam it into Sam's back, but he's like batting his hands away uh, at every turn. He's not managing to quite make a purchase. What would you like to do? Uh, it's been a while since I've played. Can I invoke a trouble? Uh, you can, in fact. So my idea of being the bumbling, clumsy idiot is that he overplans so much to the point where he's bound to trip himself up. I imagine that EC right now is seeing this motion picture and he is getting like down in a runner's pose <laughs> to jump at this person to try to grab the bottle to do something and instead hits the biggest duffel pud that has the biggest foot and like a spring, the duffel pud goes flying in that direction. Okay. So I imagine like he goes to run, he fumbles and hits the duffel pud and springs him in that direction. <laughs> All right. Just a duffel pud projectile. <laughs> yeah, I think let's go with careful for that because you're trying so hard to execute on this plan that you've come up with. Uh, so yeah, go careful with that. 
And you can get, yeah, a free plus two with that clumsy idiot for one of your fate points. I got a two. <laughs> Does that include the fate point uh, to get your plus two from clumsy idiot? No, it does not. That's just my careful. Okay. Let's see how the Marsh Wiggle does before we start moving too much further forward. Uh, he is going to try and wiggle his way out of the Duffel Pud's flight path. And he only gets a plus one. Nice. Okay. So just barely managed to eke your way through. The Duffel Pud goes flying through the air and the arch of his foot slams this marsh wiggle right in the face. Ooh. And the duffel pud goes spinning further off into the maze, just like, whoa, kind of <laughs> flying away from the scene of the fight. Uh, the marsh wiggle is looking even more dazed at this point, but he's still just barely holding on. And you hear him starting to mutter, oh, the boss, I can't fail. The boss is gonna be so angry. Uh, as he continues to flail out wildly with this broken beer bottle. EC, who would you like to go next? I think that would be my buddy Sam over here. Listen, listen, you little pugglewug. Listen, <laughs> you, you're just, you're here above your pay grade. You're dealing with Aslan's personal detective. <laughs> and I'm hoping, he, okay, what is this creature? What is he? A marsh wiggle. I don't remember what that is. Are those the guys with the big foot? The one foot? No, those those are the duffel puds. Ah, of course. The marsh wiggles. It's, you know, like we said, uh, it's from the silver chair, which none of us remember anything about. Yeah. So nothing. <laughs> the marsh wiggles are a race of kind of humanoid frog-like creatures. Oh. They live in the marshlands, so they're kind of like Smeagol from before he became Gollum. Oh, Think man. of that kind of vibe almost. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> I'm just going to bundle him up in my arms now so that he still can't get any purchase on me and just kind of rock him like a baby and say, it's all right, you can go to sleep. Just just go to sleep now. <laughs> all right. That sounds careful to me, I suppose. <laughs> sure. That works. Uh, flat zero. Oof. Even with your plus two? Yeah. Nuts. Well, he's going to try and defend with forceful to not go to sleep, and he gets a plus five. Mama oh, mia, this guy. Oh. So, success with style to defend. <laughs> I'm not tired. <laughs> I, I don't like this. I'm, I'm going to spend a second fate point and invoke Aslan's personal detective, because that's what I am. If I say he's going to go to sleep, he's darn well going to go to sleep. Ah. All right. Pulling out the name drop. Go for yeah. that re-roll, presumably. Yep. Come on now. You don't exactly the same roll. <laughs> Ooh, these dice are no. failing me as well. Time for some new dice. Okay. Well. He's not tired. He's not EP. Yeah. The Marsh Wiggle succeeding with style to defend. Not only do you not get what you want, but he gets a boost as well. So you start rocking him back and forth, and he starts going, oh, you know what? A little bit of rest would be so nice. I've been, I've been at this for so long, but I'm so tired. And he starts snoring, and you from over are like, all right, got him taken care of. And the next thing you know, glass right in your snout. Ooh, you see snout. blinding flashes of light behind your eyelids, ah. not coming from your friend. Uh, <laughs> For once. <laughs> the rest of you hear as Sam bellows out in pain, the sound of a marsh wiggle falling to the ground and then flapping feet starting to rush off further into the maze. You froggy twerp, nobody does that to my big friend. I'm sorry, I, I thought I had him. I didn't mean to. He, I thought he was asleep. And at the end of this exchange now, the only one who hasn't gone yet is the marsh wiggle, so he is going to try and slip out past the other duffel puds out through that back entrance that EC came in through. So correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't I still there since technically I tripped among them? Yeah, aren't so, I still back with them? Yeah, so he's going to try and run past you and the boost that he got from his success with style and defend is a moment of surprise. So he's going to try and use that to his advantage to escape with quick. He's got a plus four, and with that boost, brings him up to a plus six. Wow. I hate this Where guy. Where did you get these dice? I'm going to give this guy to the Ice Queen. That's it. <laughs> the dice are treating me well tonight. Is there anything I can do as a reaction? Yeah, so you can try and block him. How would you attempt to do that? I am going to block him with Clever, and 
as he's running and surprising me, I'm going to let out a blood-curdling dame scream and <laughs> try to throw my voice. Yeah. Okay. Trying to disorient him. Go ahead and roll with clever then. And I'd like to invoke the aspect no book is ever like its cover. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. You are trying to pretend that you are someone that you are not. Or... Am I not the person that you think that I am? Dun, dun, dun. And I'm the something else, the not. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Triple crossed by a double crosser. What the heck? <laughs> okay, so invoking my aspect means I get plus two, right? Yep, you spend a fate point to get plus two, or you can reroll. Right, which means that the last time I rolled, I actually got a five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's five. Okay. But instead, I could have re-rolled. You could have re-rolled if you want to. Which could give me more. I mean, what do I have to lose, right? Right. Sometimes you got to risk it for the biscuit. Yeah. If you can figure out a way to use another one of your aspects for another fate point, then you could add another plus two. Oh, I absolutely can. I still have the red herring in my hand. You do. You've already used the stunt ability for it, but now you can use it as an aspect. Okay. I want to... Use it, disorient him, and hook him under the ankle with it. All right. <laughs> so he trips. Yeah, you throw your voice off to the side, and in that moment of distraction, just swing this red herring right at his ankles to try and knock him out from under him. I like the strategy here. <laughs> so that's a seven. That brings it up to a seven. Okay. Let's go. Nice. Okay, you swing out, and he goes sprawling. He goes head over heels, tumbling down the hallway. He still has one stress left. So he is just on the other side of you and the duffel puds, and he lifts his head, and you can see the birds flying around. Uh, <laughs> his eyes are all loopy, googly, going all over the place as he's trying to pull himself back up to make his escape. Uh, let's pass it over to Drew, let's say. Okay. Well, the camera hasn't been working very well today. Time to lean back on old reliable. I am sprinting at this man and I'm gonna use my stunt, hard evidence, where in this case, the evidence I am presenting is a baseball bat that I'm gonna throw at him. <laughs> <laughs> I stole this from the precinct earlier. Yeah. <laughs> this was used in that murder case from a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's hard, it's made of ash. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and shuck this hard evidence that I have on my person at this guy. All right, yeah, I'll give you a free invoke on this. Yes! So you're just chucking this right at him. Uh, it sounds perhaps quick to me yep. to try and get him before he leaves. Yeah, 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 we'll say it's, you know, mid-chase. Yeah! Okay, that's pretty good. We got we got one. A one? Aww. Positive one. Come on. Now, we do have a free invoke for your hard evidence, so that brings it up to a plus three or a re-roll if you want to go for that. Shucks. I'll do a re-roll. I'll do a re-roll. Okay. Ah! Ooh, okay. That is a positive four this time. Okay. We're going to have him roll with Clever because he's got the birds circling around his head. Right. Uh, to see if he managed to pull his wits together quick enough. And that is a flat zero. Yeah, get birded. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Yeah, so you see this guy, he's just like pulling himself up, trying to get onto his feet. And as soon as he manages to get upright, kabunk, right in the back of the head. And he just goes splatting face down <laughs> into the stone floor. And uh, you have captured this marsh wiggle that took a lot longer to capture than I was expecting. <laughs> I don't like this guy. Boy! He seemed extremely lucky this whole chase. I don't like him either, but justice always prevails. That's why they call me old Lucky Glum. I've always been lucky, really lucky. Yeah, tell it to the judge. We should take him back to HQ. Hey, AC, we got our guy. Where you, uh, where you been? You make some friends? Who are, they, who are these? Uh, I don't know who you are. See? Oh, uh. Uh, oh, <laughs> me neither. This guy we just captured hit me on the head. I'm confused. I'm very confused. Uh, hey, read my column. Drew tape letters. You guys would really like them. Oh, you know, guys, now that I think about it, I think he's also someone we could trust. Yes. I have no idea who he is. That is right. Ever, but Drew tape letters, that sounds a bit good. So uh, yep. I think we should team up with them, right, putties? I'm an extremely reputable journalist. 
okay? I've read the Drew Tape letters. Yeah. Uh, roll with Flashy to see if they have a good opinion <laughs> of you or not. Okay. I got a six. Whoa. Oh, shoot. <laughs> you see the guy who had the cigar from before, he tosses it behind him and he pulls out a binder. He opens it up and you see it's full of clippings of your column. And he says, could you sign this for me, Mr. Drew Tape? Wow. That's, could I? Yes, I could. And I take it this means you donate, right? You're one of our, you're one of our contributors. Yes. Yes. I'm a member of the sticker club. Thank you. <laughs> I love to hear that. Go to patreon.com slash the Drew Tape letters <laughs> or slash improv tabletop. That also works as a URL. Uh, <laughs> I'm, anyway, your contribution means a lot. Uh, yes, I will sign this. Do, 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 do. I sign. <laughs> Look at you. It's like you're a celebrity. I know. This happens like once a month. I love it. This is why I do what I do. Really. It's for the recognition. <laughs> it feels good to see you getting the recognition you deserve. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome. It feels good um, <laughs> to be recognized. So my name's Easy Fellow People Who I Do Not Know. Oh. Um. And I guess us duffel puds are joining with you. I believe your names are Drew and Sam. I think I just heard Sam somewhere. Correct. So meet them. Let's be on a team. Yeah, kind of like yeah. we joined forces. I mean, you're incredibly astute right out the bat. I, I love this. I love this idea. Yes, we, we can always use more informants. Informant. I am a leader of the duffel pud. I just want you to know, Sam, okay? You think that I'm the little guy and I'm just like the dope behind you that you send out to do errands and everything, but I am smart and I am the leader and, and I've never met you before. True. <laughs> Very true. We've never met. Mm. Uh, we should get this criminal to the jailhouse or castle or wherever criminals go. Oh my gosh. Where if we got him. We're supposed to interrogate this guy. I forgot right. he was even there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sam. I've got him by the scruff of the neck. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, like, you you turn back in the direction of where he was sprawled out on the floor, and you see the rest of the duffel puds. They're in a turf war. So, like, three of the duffel puds have his arms and his legs, and he's splayed out. And then oh. the fourth one has the baseball bat just, like, hey. lifted up hey. ready to swing. We need that. No, no, no. So Sam is just holding his cloak. <laughs> yeah, I've got, Dang it. I've got his jacket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's pretty light. Um, we need him for at least another hour. You guys can do what you want in a little bit, probably. And the one with the binder says, hey, listen, guys, this is Drew Tape. We do what Drew Tape asks, okay? Thank you. And very dejectedly, they slowly lower the Marsh Wiggle uh, uh, Lucky Glum down to the floor. You guys are all right. Every dog gets their day. You'll have yours. This dog is about to have a bad day, I point to our captive. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that that happens. I put him in a sack. <laughs> like Add criminal to your inventory. <laughs> like, this guy is wriggly, and mm -hmm. yeah, I, I just straight up put him in a sack. It's <laughs> burlap. He can breathe. He's fine, but mm -hmm. he's not going to get away easily. Darn tootin'. Yeah, you toss him in the back of the paddy wagon, <laughs> and you turn to the unicorns that are pulling it, and uh, one of the unicorns turns back and says, Back to HQ, boss. <laughs> That's right. We'll take this scummy scum back to HQ where we can properly interrogate him. All right. So it starts clip-clopping along the way, and uh, the duffel puds have gotten into their own little cart, and they're kind of moving along the side of you. Uh, as you've been traveling for a while, let's have everybody roll with Clever real quick. Okay. Four. Three for me. Uh, that's a zero for me. <laughs> Lovely. Not the cleverest guy. I'm going to <laughs> roll sneaky over here. So, Drew Tape, you are a finely honed investigator. You know how to pick out a detail where others might not be able to see it. As you've been riding along for a while, you hear a noise and you look out the back of the wagon and you see, like, just as you have turned a corner, you barely catch a glimpse of another wagon that seems to be tailing you at a distance. Oh, okay. I'm going to very inconspicuously take out my camera and start taking, like, flash photography of this wagon. All right. Inconspicuously sounds sneaky to me. Inconspicuous is also, like, 
a bit of an oxymoron, but uh, as much as possible. You keep using that word. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> I, I don't it know. means what you think it means. Okay, why not? All right, roll to overcome with sneaky. Okay, that's a nice warm zero. All right, <laughs> gonna roll for clever for these other guys. You go to snap a photo, and then you realize, oh, forgot to take the flash off, and it's just this blinding, <laughs> and you can see, like, as you turn another corner, like, all of the duffel puds are like, hey, what you doing? You're trying to blind us over here? When you look back in the direction of the cart that was following you, it was there right before the flash, and now you can't see it anymore. Sorry, gang, my journalist instincts were telling me we were being followed, but I guess I was super wrong. <laughs> anyway. At that exact moment, you hear gunfire coming from the side of you guys. Ah, oh, jeez! What? what in the old magic is that? <laughs> Not again. I'm sick of being shot at every day in this kingdom. The unicorns rear up in fear and start sprinting as fast as they can, pulling you down this bumpy forest road, bouncing up over rocks and roots that have, like, grown over the path and whatnot. And you look over to the side from where the gunshots came, and you see another carriage. Uh, the person driving it has a black mask over their face, a hood pulled up high, and in the back of the wagon, you can see that there are a couple other individuals, and they've pulled out their revolvers, and they're taking shots at you guys. What would you like to do? I have a question. How close is the duffel pud wagon? Uh, the duffel puds, they are... Let me take a gander. How how defensible of a position are they in? They're like on the other side of you guys from where these people are. Oh, okay. So they're currently out of firing range because you guys are in the way. Okay. Aw, cool. So somebody... This is a new third party. The duffel puds are not after us. No, the duffel puds are on your side. They're, they, they need to get their prisoner back so they can beat them up after you're done interrogating. That's right. That's right. Darn, the marsh wiggles are the bad guys. Or so we think. <gasps> or are they? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, okay. Well, obviously our little captive has some information they don't want us to know. This attack affirms that. I would like to safely and smartly avoid all bullets, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Sounds clever to me. <laughs> okay. Do the smart thing. Don't get shot. Why not? Oh, go oh my gosh. I, I think I am. I got a five. A five? All right. <laughs> I'm going to roll with Clever for these guys to see if they can manage to get you. Ooh, that's only a plus one for them. Cool. cool. Success with Style to Defend, you also get a boost. Hmm. Uh, I think the boost that I'm going to give you is you manage to capture a photo of the wagon, like they yes. go over a bump, and you can see one of the guys in the back, his hood and his mask kind of like start flying off for a moment as they're going over the bump. You catch the photo, and then he grabs his clothes and wraps them back around his head. So the boost that I'm going to give you is photographic evidence. Nice. Okay. Uh, I am going to forcefully grab, because we've got revolvers and things like that, but I'm a minotaur. I usually carry, a, you know, a big hefty axe around with me. I'm going to forcefully throw that axe and try to take out one of their paddy wagon wheels. <laughs> All right, go for it. Yeah. The driver's going to try and defend with quick to dodge out of the way. This might be bad juju. I'm combining two different dice sets <gasps> oh my. to see if they'll do any better together than they did apart. <laughs> Uh, plus four. Heck yeah. They got a plus three. All right. All right. Yeah. So you chuck the axe and it smashes the wheel and you see the carriage kind of like go careening sideways. It's like drifting along this road until it T-bones into a tree Oof. in the middle of the pathway and you hear splintering. The entire back half of the cart is left behind as it's just the person in the driver's seat with this just absolute wreck of a carriage trailing behind them. So it's basically just like a chariot at this point <laughs> uh, as they're continuing to try and follow after you. But the rest of their friends have been left behind. Nerd. Very nice. Very nice. Now, EC, as your friends have been taking care of business in their own ways, how would you like to take care of business? So I'm I'm gonna whisper my plan into Sam's ear. 
And then I'm going to throw Sam to the ground of the cart, kind of. Not big throw to break the cart because he's huge, <laughs> but enough to make a thud next to the bag that he's been holding to. So I'm going to have him drop the bag, like thud next to him and make like, uh, uh, uh sounds while I like pretend to slap him. But I'm really like hitting, I don't know, a piece of pig that we have back there. I don't know. <laughs> Some pig flesh. And I have a question. Did I hear <laughs> Just on hand. the people in the other wagon as they were getting derailed from their wheel, did did I hear them like make sounds or commands or talking or anything where they were using their real voices? Mm. What you... does this have to do with hitting me and knocking no me worry. down? I'm so confused. I'm clever. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, speaking of clever, let's have you roll with clever to see if you heard anything interesting. Okay, um, I got a two. All right, so yeah, as the wagon like completely split in half, you were able to hear the driver kind of call back to them and shout out, head back to the hideout. We'll meet up later. Okay, so thinking of this, as I'm like hitting and stuff, I'm going to grab the bondaged fellow and like put my arm around him as this commotion's going on and I'm going to try to impersonate that voice that I heard and say, don't worry, Luxter, we've got you back. We're bringing you back home to you know who. And I'm going to leave like open-ended comments <laughs> trying to get information out. <laughs> You're so clever. I never would have thought of that. That is pretty clever. Let's have you roll with clever. Come on, give me something good. Just bless it. Come on, dice. Come on. <gasps> Ah, five. All right. Five. Nice. All right. I'm going to have him roll with Clever to see if he can see through your ruse. He gets a one. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> Bamboozled. Get tricked. <laughs> As Sam's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Success with style to overcome. You accomplish your goal and generate a boost. Yes. Go. As you start telling him that, you know, he's in safe hands, uh, you hear him say, oh, yes, back into... Into the queen's cold embrace, uh, or I will find safety. Oh my. I, I lean over to Sam there and I'm like, it's always the dame. It's always <laughs> the dame. It's always the dame. Those rotten dames, I say to the air. <laughs> and so the boost that I'm going to give you for the success with style will be a convenient tidbit of information. <laughs> you will be able to redeem this at a future point to be able to extrapolate something in that situation based off of what you have heard here. Cool, Ooh. puzzle pieces. Nice. And so, yeah, Lucky Glum, having heard that, he was kind of, you know, turning back and forth fitfully, but now that he's safe, he just kind of lays out peacefully, not a care in the world at this moment, and just goes to sleep. <laughs> I didn't have to knock him out. That's what I told him to do earlier. You did it, Sam. You did it. <laughs> Better late than never. Now that all three of you have gone, there's somebody off to the side. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> here's what this person does. You see they wrap the reins around one of their arms so they're controlling the whole thing with one arm. And with the other, they reach into their cloak and pull out a sawed-off shotgun and <laughs> aim it just one-handed towards you guys. What? The old magic? <laughs> the old magic. <laughs> My gosh. And they're going to roll with Forceful to try and hit one of you. Who are they going to try and hit? A shot rings out in the darkness. This one's going for Sam Sparrow Gold. Oh, dear. How would you like to defend? Does it matter that he's prone in the cart? That's true. I was knocked down. You know what? That's a good point. <laughs> They're going to go for the one that they can see. They're going to go for Drew Tape. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, well. Sorry, Drew. I'm going to use my, uh, <laughs> my, gosh, I don't know, my expert ducking skills to duck real good out of the way. All right. Sounds pretty quick to me. Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, that is just a two. A two. And they only got a three, so it's not the worst shotgun wound you could have taken. <laughs> it's not the worst shotgun <laughs> I'm going to spend a fate point. Uh, okay. And say, I don't deal with dames. Pr presumably, one of the shooters is a woman, so I'm just going to not 
let her hit me. <laughs> <laughs> misogyny at its most powerful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I activate the power of misogyny. And the women must sob and sob. All right. Yeah. Uh, are you going to reroll or plus two? I'm just going to plus two. Bring it from uh, two to four. All right. Uh, you know what? I've got fate points too. Oh, snap. <laughs> and I want to shoot Connor, so oh, gorge. I'm going to spend one fate point for their aspect. My poor innocent misogynist. <laughs> yes. Their aspect is I hate misogyny. Ah. So, <laughs> My kryptonite. <laughs> so they're going to bring spend one fate point to bring that up to a plus five. Well, I guess I just t- accept the buckshot <laughs> yeah. from there. <laughs> So at this point, like, Sam had fallen back while EC was, like, pretending to smack him across the face and stuff. So you had to take over the reins for a moment. And as the buckshot hits you on your right hand, you have to let go of it for a second. And you feel (sighs) the unicorn starting to careen out of control for a moment. Uh, How would you like to try and stabilize your control over these unicorns? No, no. (laughs) You majestic creatures remember. Do, do it for Aslan, right? Sam, say the thing. <laughs> for Aslan. <laughs> you heard him. <laughs> Hopefully that does the trick. Sam, say the thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's have you roll with Flashy to try and convince them. And I think we can we can say that if Sam gives up his upcoming action, we can give you a plus one to that roll. I'll do that. Thank you, Sam. Oh, oh. Uh, and that was Flashy, you said? Yes. That's a seven. A Ooh, seven. Yes. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> So, yeah, at this point, you speak to the unicorns and they say, Yes, for Aslan, we shall do it. (laughs) And they start galloping even faster. And you see a puff of smoke erupts from the wheels at the backside of your wagon. You just go tearing off down this pathway. You finally hit cobblestones. And you look back and you see your pursuer is trying to catch up with you, but just can't quite make it. Fires the shotgun into the air in anger and frustration. And you look and you see uh, the city off in the distance where you will be able to find some safety from this crazy pursuant. And that, my friends, is what we call a trivial pursuit because they didn't catch us. <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> yeah, that that's a, sounds to me like a pretty good button for us. You get up the nice quippy one-liner, and as you ride off into the last moments of the dusk before night has fallen completely, I think that's where we're going to pick up next time. Wow. <laughs> what a high-octane beginning. From chase to chase. I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't this. No. <laughs> Lots of chase. <laughs> we running. Yeah. This is, this is actually really fun. <laughs> yeah, dude. Turns out noir was a good choice. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Uh, well, everybody, thanks for joining us here in the world of Noirnia. If you want more, go ahead and subscribe. Maybe even give us a review. We would be as happy as a Marsh Wiggle who knows that he is definitely safe and isn't going to wake up in a jail if you go ahead and give us a review on the podcatcher of your choice. We're also all over social media at Improv Tabletop, so if you would like to connect with us there, uh, maybe you want to talk with Connor about his photography skills, maybe. then don't be afraid to reach out. Now it's time to shout out our next batch of Sticker Club patrons. Yeah. And this time around, we've got Michael Sear, Paul Cosgrove, and Sarah Martin. Ow, ow. Right. Man, how convenient that it's always Connor on the podcast these days whenever his girlfriend is getting shouted out. I know her. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> and also, hi, Mikey and Paul. These individuals are the people who are going to uh, help you set up a nice interrogation chain back in the city making sure that you've got all of the proper snacks to keep your blood sugar up so you don't fly off the chain too bad oh of course Uh, make sure that you've got all the proper torture implements you might need all laid out nicely in a row tidying up the blood to get this marsh wiggle to spill his guts (laughs) so yeah because of their help you're definitely 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 going to get some nice high quality information Mm. during the upcoming episode yeah Mm -hmm. I'm uh just picturing Mikey all gussied up like a mobster, and he, he, that actually works pretty well. He could he right. fit right in quite nicely. He could pull it off for sure in a good way, Mikey. In yeah. a good way. I feel like he would run a really 
nice torture room as well. Like <laughs> this would be like the Apple store of torture rooms. He'd be the good cop. And Paul is looking very smart. Yes. With a bow tie. Extremely and smart. A um, really great waiter outfit. Mm, tasteful <laughs> color scheme yes. as well. <laughs> that Paul. Nice. We will have more Sticker Club patrons to shout out next week. And if you, dear listener, want to join their ranks, consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Drew Tape Letters, where you can also get things like Discord access, biannual sticker packs, and more, such as our current ongoing patron-exclusive campaign, Miceborn, the Mouse Ritter Chronicles. Oh, yeah. And speaking of Michael Sear, he is our first ever guest player in yeah! Improv Tabletop history Yes, uh, over on the Mouse Ritter Chronicles on our Patreon. And he's killing what? it. What? He's super killing it. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. He's doing such a great job. I'm super happy with the performance he's given. <laughs> so if you want to meet a lovely little Bayou Gator named Witherby, <laughs> hop on over to our Patreon where you can see Mikey performing it in all of his glory. And uh, also go back and listen to Bond Must Die, which he gave us the vocals for. That the, he did. Uh, the theme song for that. Such a great job. Mm. Now, let's do a round of plugs. Connor, would you like to take that this time around? Yes, I would love to. Thank you for asking. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I, I always want to talk about books. Um, Nerd. I know, right? And I'm, I'm going to try not to info dump too much here. Books are good, man. I've read some really good books this year, and I'm just going to drop, just sprinkle a few in there. First of all, I want to give a shout out to our sister podcast, I Cast Fireball. Yeah. Because they're doing some incredible stuff right there. My favorite book, I Cast Fireball. Ah, uh, yes, I Cast Fireball, the book by Thomas. Um, no, but back to my plugs. The important plugs. Yes, The Terror by Dan Simmons, which is now one of my favorite horror stories that uh, falls very, very nicely under the lens of historic fiction. That was super compelling and well-written. Uh, I am currently reading The Stand by Stephen King, which is mind-blowing in how good it is. Mm. I don't know how it ends. I know that tends to be a caveat with some people in King, so we'll return and report there. Um, but the other book that I would love to get a shout out to is Larry McMurdy's Lonesome Dove. This is mm -hmm. a cowboy story, and it's also often regarded as one of the best books ever written. It's so darn good. The dialogue is like, it's unconscionable how natural it all feels. And you forget so often that you're reading a Wild West story because it just feels like the human experience just laid out in such an accessible, entertaining way. Uh, so again, we have Lonesome Dove, The Terror, and The Stand by Stephen King. These are three great books that I've read this year. Couldn't recommend them any higher. They're marvelous. Well, everybody, thank you for joining us here in the world of Nuarnia. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and I've been joined by... Caleb Anderton as Sam Sparrow Gold. What, what did I say? What's my name? <laughs> <laughs> yep, Sparrow Gold. Sparrow Gold. <laughs> yep, I was right. Donna Wood as Drew Tape at the Drew Tape Lettuce. Heather as Isakai. <laughs> Much love and stuff, everybody. We'll catch you next time on Noarnia. <laughs> Man, those duffel puds and wiggle marshes. I completely forgot about wiggle marshes. Mar marsh wiggles? Yeah. See? I forgot. <laughs> it's from the silver chair. Nobody remembers the silver chair. I forgot that was even one of the, uh, like, gun in my head. I would not have been able to name that in the series. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I remember correctly, Eustace is the main character in that one. So, I mean, uh, uh, yes. who cares? Yes. Fan favorite, Eustace. <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves Eustace Scrub. What a guy. <laughs> I love the one thing I do remember is just the commentary at the beginning of how unfortunate Eustace's name is. <laughs> <laughs>